Welcome everyone to the Split View Internet Podcast. The time is currently 12.55 p.m. With me today is Jordy. Hi. My yeah. name is... Fuck. <laughs> okay, I, was gonna, I thought you were going to chime in with like a... Were you just about to sing Eminem? Name. No, no. I stopped so that you could like interrupt me and go like, thank you. I fucking Before did, I even finished. That was a good intro, man. They say I've got a face for radio. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, everyone, welcome to Split View. Already did the intro. Yeah, I know. What the fuck? Yeah, but you don't. No one knows who you are. Twenty episodes in, and they still. You said my name, I think. You said Tom. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a new week. It's Tom. Tom is weak. (laughs) Ha ha. Not letting it die. (laughs) But before we start that, I have two announcements that I want to make. Geordie has coronavirus. Yep, and the second Probably. one is that um, you all get it by proxy by listening to yeah. this. Okay, now my first thing is that it is my dad's birthday, and I know he is an avid listener of the show. So happy birthday, Dad. Hope you enjoy the surprise party on Saturday night that you don't know about, <laughs> but uh, now you do because this comes out on Sunday. Is there actually and a also surprise party? Lived. Yeah, there is. Oh, wow. And um, what else? What was the other thing? Oh, yeah, and we also have new content coming. It's called Flick View at the moment. At the moment, yep. it's in the works. Um, similar to Split View, we're going to sit down, watch a movie, and then jump here in the studio and have a have a talk about it. It'll be under the uh, Split View umbrella, and it'll be on the same Spotify so, and iTunes and everything, and YouTube, etc., wherever you listen yep. to it. Um, and it'll be in the title so you don't get confused. All the others will just be... Uh, random things unless we get copy striked by uh copy, copy striked, i don't know um itunes and all them seem to have a bit of a problem itunes is the worst like they have in they have an actual document outlining what you can and can't do and like pretty much violates that so right so if that's the case then we'll try and find a work around it but uh we'll just have to wait and see but yeah so it'll be called flick view might not be as long as these episodes probably not but we're just yeah. going to watch it fresh and then uh, we won't spoil what the first movie is that we're going to look at mostly because we haven't decided yet. <laughs> but uh, that's coming, so you can look forward to that. That also won't be on a schedule, we should mention. That'll come yeah. out just randomly. I'll be editing these ones. Tom edits these ones because he's brilliant. Tom, okay, cool. your your topic. Let's I get wanted, into I it. wanted to show Let's Jordy... Let's get right into the news. That, is, that guy is a racist, but also I can somewhat sympathize with him because he is a fighter of justice. How the fuck do you simp- simp- Wow, simp- it's hard to, but he he has a voice of reason. Keemstar. Sometimes, no, he sometimes. fucking doesn't. No, he fucking when doesn't. he's not being an, a belligerent racist, which is always. Yeah, pretty much. That's why it's hard to sympathize with him. But sometimes you just said you can. Some I said it's hard to, but I can. I can't. All he does is he tries to start beef with people. That's his channel. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like he makes money off of it, but like he he that doesn't make it better. <laughs> He, um, because that's his job, like, he's a fucking racist, he's, like, a terrible person, he makes light of, like, crushing news, he, like, pointed, um, he fucking caused an old dude on Twitch to cry because he was, like, falsely convicted and all that, but he, um, in, like, certain kind of YouTuber battles, YouTuber wars, he can be the light of reason and, like, expose people for being pieces of shit, but yeah, he... Every, Jordy, everyone's a piece of shit. That is true. I'm a piece of shit. I am too. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, we're, we're going to talk about something today that is that interests me. It's uh, important for both of us and everyone since we use technology. It's going to be about technology, obviously, because yep. I like technology. We've somewhat talked about this a tiny bit in okay. one of my episodes, but I kind of brushed past it. Um, so we're talking about backdoors. Okay. Do you know what a backdoor is? Uh, yeah, you got one in your house right here. Yeah, I know. Okay, what like seriously in technology? Um, like like, sort of a a, a way into a program or to a something. Yeah. Right. Like pretty much. Yeah. It's an intentional kind of like entry point for people to gain access to something. Intentional. Yeah. Like well, uh, kind of an un- yeah. I a backdoor is an intentional thing. Okay, I didn't know that. There you go backdoors can arise unintentionally but that is just called an exploit but you know it's it's an intentional thing like kind of the reason why i wanted to talk about this and we'll better explain it is um the uh fbi case with apple a while ago have you heard at all about that like is no, that familiar? I haven't. okay that's good so um say you're apple right you you are uh, you're i was gonna say Steve sitting Jobs. in my in my <laughs> throne of money yeah yeah like you um 
Yeah, I was, yeah, I was going to say Steve Jobs, but yep. you're... What the fuck, Tim Cook? Is that his name? I don't know, dude. I think it's Tim I, Cook. It sounds familiar. Yeah, you're Tim Cook, right? You you run Apple. Someone... The FBI comes to you, right? They shoot you an email, give you a quick, you know, call, because people call people, and they're <laughs> yeah. like, hey, we um we have this phone owned by Osama Bin Laden. Not oh. actually, because he's dead by then. Yeah, so, like, insert terrorist leader, right? Yeah. FBI comes to you be like, yeah, this this iPhone was owned by a terrorist leader. We It has a passcode on it and a fingerprint. We need it open so we can see whatever battle plans and, you know, like, secret intel yeah. that they were planning. What do you do? Uh, You're well, Tim Cook. What do you do? See, I always just assume that Apple can do this anyway because, I mean, that's how, like, you know how it reminds me of when all these kids used to, like, just fuck with iPods until you were locked out for 87 yeah, years? Yeah, yeah. Like, they have to have a way to get at it. I think that's a reasonable enough reason. So Don't in, you? In, in this, in actuality, iPhones, Apple cares a fuckload about security. This might come as a surprise to you, but Apple actually cares an incredible amount about security. Okay. More than any other company I can think of. Right. Their iPhones actually do not have backdoors in them. At, at, at max, that's a different story. There are ways to get into it. iPhones actually do not have backdoors built into them. So right. what the FBI were asking was for Apple to create a new update for this iPhone specifically and sign it with their key so that the iPhone would accept it over USB. Right. They basically wanted to make like a Trojan update for it and then update it so that it will unlock with like a preset pin. Right. So FBI comes to you and they tell you to do this. Do you say yes or no? Do you do this for them? Well, here's... Jordy, this phone was owned by Osama Bin Laden, insert terrorist leader. It could have plans, you know, you could save lives if you unlock this, Jordy. Here's the problem, right? Is that they could probably, like, I don't know, charge you, I don't know what the word is, like for impeding justice if you don't do it. Right, you could ask them nicely and do it the first time, yeah. Or you could risk them even doing that because they want it that badly. I'm going to talk about this in a couple of minutes, but like this is the kind of scenario I wanted you to kind of. I'm just, I'm just thinking like, what if you got into it and that triggered something? If you got into the phone, Mm. I suppose they don't really have a way if like iPhones don't have backdoors or something. But if I was a terrorist leader, right? Yeah, I would have something happen if someone got a hold of my phone. Well, you, you can't really modify iPhones. Like, that's part of the security. That's but true, like, yeah. So just, this is just like a plain kind of, you know, like, Apple can do this, and you are Apple in this scenario. Yeah. Do you allow... Do you give... More importantly, do you give these tools to the FBI? That's kind of... I wouldn't give them the tools. I would, the I would thing make is, the, the... The FBI calling you, like, they're texting, emailing you, so you're going to have to send this over to them, right? Oh, that's different. They don't have the phone. I saw them in a room together. Oh, Sorry. I saw them in a room together. I don't know why. Like they, yeah. they. I feel like they would come up to them, maybe depending. They probably have an office somewhere. Well, do you think? Yeah. Do you think I wouldn't the give FBI is going to allow Apple like unrestricted access to the phone anyway? Like, do you think they're just no. going to leave them in a I room? I don't. I don't think they would do it unless they showed up in person. They put the USB in themselves, hit OK, and then yeah. left. But like, even then, the FBI aren't going to let them do that. They're not going to let them because they want the tools. So in like. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, give sorry, it to them then. Yeah, okay, right. So you wouldn't, right? You wouldn't, even no, though wouldn't. the info on this phone could help save potentially thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives, terrorist plans and everything, you wouldn't do it. No, well, because it, like, if someone else was listening in and they, you know, people are always watching what the FBI is doing. Not even someone, just the FBI themselves. Just, yeah, exactly. Like, you never know what they'll use it for. Exactly. And if yeah. anyone gets into some sort of FBI database or something i sound like such a fucking like idiot talking about this but like if someone gets into it and then they find it everyone else is fucked like they'll need to release yeah. some sort of update to stop it from happening or something but like it's just not worth it it's like when we talked about the aliens if they give us an instant cure yeah. for everything like it's just not worth it like the, yeah. the repercussions are too big for one thing so this this actually happened this this is something that was going to happen. So there was a, a guy, like, I'm not going to say, I never say the names of these people. Um, basically in California, like 14 people were killed and um, they got a hold of the uh, the shooter's phone and they wanted, like, 
I don't even know if he was part of a terrorist group or something. They wanted they wanted to know who his accomplices are and all that. They have his iPhone. It's like an iPhone 5C, like the baby blue wow, like, plastic geez. looking one. Fuck. And um, <laughs> they went to Apple or called them whatever and like, hey, we need this phone unlocked so we can figure out who the accomplices are. Where like, you know, we need information to charge them, whatever. Stop this from happening again. And um, Apple just straight up said no. Right. Because why the fuck would they do that? They exactly. care. They don't care as much with Macs. Like they've been, they've made strides, and it's kind of shitty because it's a computer and it shouldn't be locked down like that. But phones, whether you like it or not, are like the most sensitive piece of technology people have on them. Because what do you, if you if you forget the password for your email, how do you recover it? Well, you would use your phone. Yeah, you probably get a text message so, yeah, on your phone yeah. verifying and all that. So yeah, everything is linked most, to your phone. Yeah, for sure. Like everything, um, I have like Authenticator app, or I have a YubiKey, but I have like, you know, there's shit on my phone that's yeah, sensitive, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. And phones have become like a person's identity almost. Like yeah. everything is on your phone because it's just so handy. So Most people have their credit card. Like, yeah. Like, in, or like Apple Pay, yeah. Google Pay, or at least saved in like oh, a yeah, Chrome browser. Yeah. Like with my phone, if you unlock it, you can use my fucking debit card. Exactly, so. like... So phones are like Apple cares a shitload about this. Whether oh, like good on them. like I give them shit a lot because they do shitty things, but that is like honorable. They they absolutely protect their users' data and security and all that. That's great. That's great. That's good to hear. So they flat out just said no. They said no. We're not going to make a patch. Like what essentially what the FBI wanted them to do in detail is um, when there's an update to an iPhone, it's like an encrypted kind of block of data. And it's signed using Apple's private key. Yeah. So this private key, Apple only has this, and that that essentially lets the iPhone know, hey, this was made by Apple. I'm only going to accept this and nothing else. Right. So what the uh, FBI wanted Apple to do is create a um, a new block of data, a new update, and sign it with this key so that the iPhone would accept it. Yeah. But the problem with that is that as soon as the FBI get this, they can reverse engineer it. They can reuse it. They Absolutely. can do a bunch of funny stuff. They could potentially just apply it to another device. They can yeah. apply it to any device they yeah. want. It's like a le- it's it's just a universal unlock for an iPhone, and that is an incredibly bad idea. Yeah, that is an insanely That's bad a idea. Terrible idea. Because what if what if they were like, hey, we have Edward Snowden's iPhone. Yeah. Not that he would use an iPhone. Yeah. Like he just wouldn't, based on principle, because he doesn't like using things that have proprietary software yeah but um like it's not always going to be a terrorist leader it's just going to be yeah, someone they'll, they'll they'll like degrade the reason for using it every time they won't even degrade they just don't have like it's just going to be anyone who'd leave the one to unlock any person of interest anyone like a uh, whistleblower anyone that's true and i mean thinking about it now they probably wouldn't like they would develop it into a way that you wouldn't have to like insert a usb they probably have like a wireless thing where you could just walk by someone. I don't know if that would even maybe, be possible, maybe not, but like but you could just walk by them and then you have access to their fucking. I can phone. think of a way they can they can do. Essentially, you can spoof a cell cell phone tower and do an over the air update using that. But there you go. So they would just use this, and that's kind of what Apple said. They were like, "No, we don't want you to have this because that's an incredible, you know, dangerous piece Violation. of technology." Yeah, yeah. So um, the court got involved. Okay. The courts went to Apple and they were like, hey, we're going to um, charge you with um, disruption oh, they of justice, they whatever. Did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like right. exactly what you said. I don't, you, you know the legal term for yeah. it, but disruption of justice or something like that. Yeah. The process of justice. But they went to Apple Ob- and like. Obstruction of justice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they, they tried to charge Apple. It didn't work because it's Apple's device. It directly violates users' privacy. So it got dropped. But yeah. that could have happened, right? brilliant i'm glad it didn't yeah yeah but the thing is this is just apple so android phones fucking terrible for security and privacy and all that Mm. google have made strides recently but you could unlock an android phone so fucking easily like it's incredible how easy you could unlock an android phone and to an extent max like max have gotten better at it but old max you could literally just hold like command T, type in like reset password, and the max password would be reset. Fuck. It was that fucking easy. But um, so yeah, court tried to do this. It didn't fucking work. And good riddance. Yeah, because no that kidding. would be a fucking scary situation if 
the F- FBI could just unlock anyone's phone. Yeah. So it actually turned out this whole thing got dropped because the FBI replied back one day being like, oh, no, it's all good. We unlocked it. I can only imagine the Apple engineer and Tim Cook were like, what the fuck? How? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, how the exa- fuck? Yeah. Well, they fucking jailbreak it. Well, you can't because it's locked, but um, what they did, it's kind of fucking stupid, like, how it worked. Essentially, they got this device. You sit a phone onto it, and it has, like, little fucking stickers you put on the front that touch the pin code. And, like you said before, if you get the pin code wrong enough times, it locks you out for a couple of hours and eventually, like, infinitely, right? Yeah. But in this certain iOS update the phone was running, there was, like, a glitch so that it wouldn't lock you out for a couple of hours, so... They just set this phone on device that, like, simulated pressing the the pin code, and they just brute forced it. That is so dumb. That must have taken hours and, like, days. yeah, you just set it in there, it charges it, like, it just resets it. So, um, Apple obviously got caught wind of this, and they fucking patched it, but that phone was unlocked, and pretty much nothing came out of it, so it's kind of pointless in the first place. There you go. Uh, that is a scary situation. Yeah, it sure fucking is. And so that that was kind of the first thing that came and to mind. And can I just say, yeah. good on that terrorist. He's being very safe by not don't, keeping his Jordy, information. Don't fucking say that. <laughs> I don't want to have to bleep that again. <laughs> why, why the fuck do you do Good this? on him for keeping his, his data safe. That's all I have to say. Okay, cool. So um, I want to talk about other kind of backdoors. A while ago on a podcast, we talked about uh, processor backdoors. I talked about something that was kind of a touchy subject involving Intel and AMD called an ME engine, management engine. Like, it's basically a built-in backdoor to a processor that works well, even when the computer is off. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's a big thing. That um, is recently coming back into fruition, like... AMD has had an issue. My processor specifically has a backdoor in it that's been found out where someone can just directly read the memory out of your computer, which is fucking dangerous because nice. they can just read private keys for like browser sessions and all that and just like hijack your browser. But that's a cool thing. But uh, what I wanted to talk about is kind of unintentional, not unintentional, but like really smart backdoors. Okay. Really like ingenious fucking like. It's a it it's it is like a question whether it actually is a backdoor or not. Okay. So um, do you know about open source software? Uh, not really. So open source means that anyone can see the source code for it. Essentially, how an application works or a program, you write uh code in like English human language, right? You do like for whatever like yeah. commands and all that, and that gets compiled into binary yeah. or byte code. And that gen, gen, generally can't be reversed. Right. So you can, but it'll be in gibberish and basically un, 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 fucking unreadable. But um, <laughs> that is a proprietary software where you can only see the binary form. You can only see the application itself. Yeah. But open source is where people can contribute to it. So Linux is open source. You can really? go on GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. Unix is um like the... the Dell Labs one, like the old ass fucking machine one, and essentially Linus Trevaldus wrote an open source version of Unix called Linux. And on GitHub right now, you can contribute to Linux. You can fix issues, you can add features to Wait. Linux. How's no, wh- how does no one just fuck with it all the time? Well, people do, but essentially on GitHub... You oh, can, they added a fuck... Someone added like their own backdoor or something? I don't know. There's probably been with Linux, but how it works right on github no it's not like it's just a free folder for people to fuck with like you can submit something called a pull request which is hey i i I fixed something do you accept this change or not Uh, and uh linus travoldus or whatever the open source contributors have to go through the code and read it to make sure it's fine it fixes whatever they test it but as you can imagine like a big patch right is someone really going to read that entire thing yeah and the thing is with that you can write code or a backdoor so well that it just looks like normal code. Okay, so brilliant. Something like that allegedly happened with okay. with HTTPS or TLS. So do you know what? Do you know, kind of know what the difference between HTTPS and HTTP is? Well, S means it's more secure, right? Yeah, S literally means yeah. secure. It's hypertext, uh, whatever, secure. Fun fact, you'll know that if they have the little lock on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, and it goes green or something in yeah, the browser? Yeah, it goes green if the root trust certificate is accepted, which is a whole story in itself. But 
So, See, um, I'm basically a programmer. Yeah, pretty much. Well, you did do a class on scripting and whatever. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so HTTPS uses something called TLS, which is Trusted Layer Socket, and it's a piece of software that sits between two browsers or a server and a browser and then makes sure the channel is secure. Okay. It, like, puts a private key and, like, whatever, you know, arranges that. Makes sure that no one can see what you're doing. And this is an open source piece of software, which sounds like a bad idea, but it's really not, since thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, people can go through it and read if there's a mistake. Right. They can oh, patch yeah. it and all that. Whereas a proprietary software, it's basically unknown whether there's, like, shit in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a risk-reward scenario, since if there is a fault in there, someone can see it instantly. Yeah. Whereas hopefully someone will patch it and they do like this this software gets updated daily and patched and all that fixed and whatever features added yeah i mean the ratio so of bad people to good is like there's still more good people than there is bad yeah exactly you can count on that at least yeah and because the code is visible you can like see mistakes or patches or backdoors whatever mm. and like they take this shit seriously like if a pull request or a feature request is like you know submitted they will more than likely just deny it without even reading it since right. it's not from someone who's trusted yeah, but um, there's something. There was there was a recent kind of thing that happened with it. I say recent, but it was like 2015, 14. It's called Heartbleed. Does that kind of? No, it doesn't. Okay, so um, one of the ways that uh, HTTPS works is that when you connect to a server, it'll send back and forth something called a heartbeat, and that's just saying, "Hey, are you there? Hey, okay. are you there? Hey, are you there?" And then your machine will reply back like, "Yes, I'm here." Yes, I'm here. Like, right. it's a back and forth kind of thing. And one of the ways that it kind of ensures that packets aren't, like, you know, lost or, like, come out of, like, out of time and all that in mm. the whole mess of the internet is that um, when the server asks, are you there, you reply back with a random piece of information, like a random string of numbers, whatever. You send that to them, the server will reply back to make sure that that's the right packet. Cause yeah. The internet is a big fucking network, and sometimes packets arrive out of order. Right. Like, a number one will arrive before, like, number two or whatever. Oh, that should happen. But number yeah. two arrived before number one. Yeah. So you send back this data. And there was a vulnerability with that. So when you send, like, a string of, like, eight characters, it it should reply back with eight characters. But some... This is a thing. Someone wrote this code right... They wrote it in such a way where no one realized there was a fault in it. And it's questionable whether this was a backdoor. Essentially what happened is that you could get the server to reply back with a chunk of its memory. Like okay. a chunk of the actual memory in the computer. And it's more than likely that someone else's session key is then there. And the session key is what's used to encrypt that data. So if you have that, you can just decrypt someone's data and see what they're sending. Right, okay. And this code was so like geniusly written that no one realized it was a fault and it was probably being used for years wow so that's if you, fucking nuts if you connected to a bank and you sent like if the whole pod if you logged into a bank right and you you're sending the password over to the bank for them to verify it someone could just see that someone could just see your username and password if you connect into a bank again making everyone feel real comfortable yeah, listeners of this show, <laughs> but it's it's still debated even today whether that was an intentional backdoor. I guess yeah. I don't. Could it really possibly happen unintentionally? Well, yeah. Someone could have just like I don't know, not had their Didn't coffee round that day. the three somewhere. You know, well, what yeah. I mean? They just the actual fault was that they weren't checking whether the data was the length that you're actually sending. Like it was just a sl- it was just a slip, right? Yeah. But it it looks like a slip, but it could easily be a backdoor. There you go. And it just happened to be in this way where you could, like, get these encrypted data out of it. Like, that's fucking, like, you know. See, like, it's good that they eventually found it, of course, even if it was a mistake or if it was a backdoor. But, like, you can fix this problem pretty easily with just, like, Mm. a dedicated team of those people who check the polls. Well, the thing thing with that, people did check it, but it just, it didn't look like anything. Like, But, I mean, that they kind of fully checked it then. Like, I... Like, if you, for instance, like, yeah. you're checking over a contract that you're signing or something, yeah. like, you got a new job, you read 90% of it, right? Usually. Yeah. You tend to skip maybe the uh, terms and conditions or something, and you read how much this, yeah. that, the other. Like, there's a chance that probably happened, and I don't think you could ever fully eliminate that, because not everyone's going to, like... 
Well, even yeah. with like I write code, and I don't like I'll, I'll write it, and there'll be issues with it. You yeah, know? but it's you kind of have to simulate what it's going to do in your brain, right? Yeah. And that's hard to do. Like you, it's called an edge case where something happens that was unexpected that wouldn't usually happen. So it is basically impossible to proofread that. Yeah, since it's just something that happened. Like no one's specifically checking, like going through code to check that like. It's re- it's checking yeah, what yeah, length. Yeah. Well, they are now, obviously, but yeah. I mean, there could be other things that they're not looking for. You I'm know? sure like, there's other things. Oh, there's yeah. probably other like vulnerabilities and shit in this TLS thing. But yeah, like that's that's um, that's kind of brings up the issue of should should proprietary well should companies be using open source software in their products? Um, I, I mean, if. And I'm sure it's in their terms and conditions. Like, if, for instance, with Apple... Yeah. And is Android open source? Oh, uh, it is, yes. Yeah, okay. So, I, uh, Well, technically, no, but it kind of is at the same time. It's it's a license issue, but yeah. Okay, I thought it was because it's like every single like Android phone has their own sort of like it's a, Android. It's a big... Well, they have their own theme, really. It's hard to explain, but it is and isn't at the same time. Okay. Well, I think Apple Apple's not open source. Oh fuck no, no no! So like, let's just use them for an example. Yeah. If they, in their terms and conditions, say that you're agreeing to use our software the way we intended it, yeah, I don't think they should have to give it out because oh, no, surely what I'm saying is that so um, if I wanted to make an operating system right, yeah, and it's just me, I don't want to write every single piece of code. So I'll take an open source library that handles keyboard input, right? Yeah. I'll put that in my code to speed it up. Yeah. The thing is, there could be a vulnerability in there. And oh, I wouldn't know since I'm I not see. reading every single line of code I'm trying yeah. to use. Like, that's what developers do. They'll use libraries from made by other people to speed sure. up development. So you can just kind of patch them all together and get something. That so is a hard one. That happens all the time. Like, um, I use a... In my game engine, I use a library called IMGUI. It's a like a debug kind of interface. Like, it uses windows and buttons and all that. Like, it lets you create stuff. Yeah. So many pieces of software use that. And there could be a, a backdoor in there. Sure. And every time someone else decides to make something, it just sort of gets passed on. Yeah, yeah. Like, this happened with um, this happened with uh, something in the Bitcoin community kind of oh, recently. Really? So there is... Um, I didn't know there was still a Bitcoin community. Well, yeah. <laughs> like an economy. I mean, it was, like, popular for about two months. And it's it's, it's a, a, still a big thing. Oh, there you go. But, um, well, because of drugs you and all that. You used to buy toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. But um, there was... So there's something called Node, which is like a JavaScript kind of thing. It's a piece of shit, but uh, it's it's very popular with Bitcoin people since you can handle Bitcoin with it and make websites that handle Bitcoin really fucking easily. Okay. And uh, uh, developers don't go out and just write everything from scratch. They use libraries, and these mm. libraries are, are condoned or like... Um, what's the word? Like confirmed, approved. That's approved, approved by like the larger community and all that. But uh, recently, something happened with a base library that essentially everything on Node.js uses. So, um, someone sold their library use. Ooh. Someone sold, like, a caretaker took over a library that someone didn't want to develop anymore. Right. And they introduced a vulnerability into it or a backdoor. What it would do, it would check if it was being run on a Bitcoin website, and then it would, like, drain funds from it. Oh, nice. So, it only affected, like, one one company at all right. and it just drained all their money like fuck loads of bitcoin because um it was just a library that everyone used you know yeah it had been used for years and years at this point but someone took over it and then introduced a vulnerability so my kind of question is say you're say you're developing self-driving cars should you oh, be allowed shit. to use open source software fuck. should you be allowed to use code in your project that you haven't written you know what like I know. Actually, I don't know how long it takes to do these types of things, but I know a it's not long time. I know it's using not libraries. quick. I yeah. know it's not quick. Like, okay, if I was to make a new, for instance, I've got a new phone. I don't like iOS. I don't like Android. Yeah. I definitely don't fucking like the Windows uh, phone thing. I want to make my own one. Yeah. How long would it take for me to just ballpark from scratch make something? Oh, fucking like years and years. Five and years. years. Yeah. Like, okay. That is a complex fucking task. Yeah. Without using these base layers and, like, base and, you know, I want it to be other... safe. I want it to be, you know, like, yeah. standard, really good. Yeah. So five years, right? 
That's just to get that's with anything. That, okay, yeah. let's even give it seven or eight, right? I want to make oh, yeah, a good yeah. fucking Fuck product. Yeah, I want to make a good product. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think, considering what we've got now, yeah, I think that if you hire a very dedicated team and do that over the eight years and make sure that it doesn't have these things, it's probably better. I understand how much longer it takes, but especially I'm talking about self-driving cars here. Things that like, I mean, your phone is important. It's very important as well. I or not only slightly below self-driving cars because that yeah. literally deals with your life, but this is your life in another sense. Your phone, yeah. Like developing from scratch, probably, and this is coming from someone who knows nothing about it, right? Would be make more sense to me, even though it takes much longer, just for the yeah. fact that you can say you know you've got a trusted group of uh, programmers who know that there is nothing in here. And I guess yeah. you can never really... Tr- like, if I, I, This is just the skeptic in me talking like... Well, not skeptic, the uh, conspiracy theorist, sorry. Like, just going like, I would never even fully trust them, you know? Like, <laughs> like a bit of an asshole? No, well, not an <laughs> asshole. It's just like, I know people. Like, okay. Well, actually, I don't. Like, These I do people and I don't. want to crash your car. That's just the type of people they are. No, I know that there are people out there who look nice, who talk nice, but have other alternatives, you know? <laughs> okay. And there's like, it's just, it's just, every, every now and then you get like a, a, what is it, like a sheep in, uh, no, a wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> yep. You know? And uh, yeah. I, I don't, I'm just a paranoid person. Everyone kind of knows that by now, I think. But like, that's why I'm always thinking about all these crazy conspiracy things, but. Yeah. That's why I don't have my own iOS, or OS, I should say, for a phone. <laughs> okay. You know? Maybe I'll work on it. But I think, yeah, I think put, putting time in, especially if you're self-driving cars mm. and shit, that would be, uh, would be more ideal. But so this, you um, can't really do that, I know. It's like... This is kind of like... It's basically impossible not to use other people's yeah, libraries know, when right. writing these big monolith programs and all that, since... Um, one of the main reasons why uh, Nintendo products get hacked a lot and jailbroken is because they use something called WebKit, which is... Uh, so you want your product to have a web browser, right? You don't want to have to write, like, millions of lines of code to get a web browser. So yeah. you, use, you buy this product. I don't know. It's probably not open source. It's just a product you can get. It's called middleware. It's called WebKit, and it's basically a little browser in a box. Yeah. Chrome is somewhat based on WebKit, I think. Right. Or Chromium is a derivative of WebKit. I think Firefox used to use WebKit. Safari definitely uses WebKit. Mm. Everything uses fucking WebKit. Right. And WebKit has vulnerabilities in it, especially if you don't update it. So Nintendo products just use WebKit. And Fuck. that's how they get fucking hacked. Like on my Wii U to hack it, I went to a single website and it got fucking hacked. Jeez. Since these fucking geniuses who make WebKit, they like introduced a vulnerability where you just can just go to a website and suddenly this website can run code on your machine. Fucking hell, come on, man. There used to be an issue on um, the 3DS where if you played an audio file, it just hacked your fucking machine. Oh, yeah. my God. So, I, you know what? I've used uh, 3DSs and DSs yeah. for almost all of my life, and now I have a Switch and shit. Every single one of their web browsers sucks fuck. Oh, yeah. They're fuck. so bad. They are so terrible. It's- it just feels like I'm... I'm using like I'm watching someone else use a computer on there, <laughs> yeah. and they they have your live stream computer from exactly. somewhere exactly. Like yeah. I don't even know if I'm controlling it half the time. It's so shit. Well, yeah, because it's Nintendo have always used like lower end processes and like web browsers are big bulky things. Yeah, especially WebKit's is big monolithic like. A framework that lags if you don't optimize it, and they Lovely. just chuck it in there just to get a web browser. Like on the other 3ds, it. it fucking sucks. Yeah, like, like they, I've never once used on my Switch at least a web browser ever. Yeah, and like I, I, I probably was just fucking around, or I really needed to look something up on my DS. Yeah. Like I don't think I've ever plugged a pair of headphones into them. Like I'm gonna sit down and watch YouTube on my fucking 3ds. Okay, cool. Well, you don't even be able to use one screen anyway. You might as well <laughs> use your phone. It is, um, it is insane how like technically complex Nintendo makes their consoles, but they still like have shitty processes in them like I don't know if you know this but the Wii U you know what the well you know what the Wii is right yeah Wii I know U. what the Wii is yeah Wii U, Wii U yeah um, how the Wii U works right it has a gamepad and it has the console yeah the gamepad is its own console and it live streams video from the Wii to the fucking gamepad fuck 
that is like the most technically complex way to do that. Like instead of making it just a wireless screen, it's its own machine. It's like what they want to do is make the hardware products and they just don't really know what to fill it with. They haven't got yeah. like haven't got like that's not what they do there. They make nice looking things yeah. and nice looking games and like, well fuck, we need something to run this shit. This software is very clunky. And they just you know, they just like, Oh, we built this nice thing. Can you put something in it? Yeah. <laughs> Can you yeah. make it run? and do things because we like this whole clippy thing it comes in yeah. and out look how cool that is you know one of the one of the early ways that the uh, the Nintendo Switch was jailbroken is that it uses the Nvidia Tegra processor which is it's called an SOC system on a chip basically Nvidia makes these little things that essentially they're meant to run Android like it's a complete computer in a little chip wow people have run Android on Switch so well, um, they, I've, I've seen people play like Minecraft and uh, not Minecraft um like just the actual games on the switch yeah, like and it looks games, so yeah. fucking stupid yeah so um uh you know the nvidia shield yeah so that uses a tegra processor pretty much the same thing that's in the switch and it runs android so um nintendo being the fucking genius they are geniuses but nintendo being the geniuses that it, that they are they put the tegra in the switch and they still included the fucking method to like flash software onto it so with the uh, with the Tegra processor, when it starts up, it looks for software to like boot off of. And Nintendo have the whole thing where it only accepts their software. But if you if you short like two pins on the fucking Nintendo Switch <laughs> in the Joy-Con thing, it just loads anything. That's and that was on the Switch, funny. and you couldn't fucking patch that. That was impossible to patch. It was built into the processor itself. That's hilarious. And then Nintendo just like neglected to like patch that or I was gonna say I bet they didn't do anything about that well they they released a new switch revision do you know what do you know what fucking irks me I reckon so the switch is a popular console right Mm. fucking expensive I still don't know why ridiculously expensive it it legitimately hasn't had a price drop ever no no I think on Christmas nor do their games oh no like they're like 70 bucks each aren't they Mm. yeah if you want to buy what was the game came out with like um that that weird beat em up Zelda game that no one really plays do you know what, like, Chron- not Zelda Chronicles, something something like, I'm thinking of Xenoblade Chronicles, but that didn't some come things out. Something of Hyrule? Yeah, here, uh, some, Legends of Hyrule, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. People know what we're talking about, I'm sure. That yeah. People don't get mad at us People for getting things wrong. People aren't screaming at their car yeah. you. Um, That game came Chronicles out. Chronicles of I'm, Hyrule? Something like that. And it is still like 60, 70 bucks. Still. I'm... And that came out like, what, how, when did the Switch come out? Like three years ago or something? The music was made by a YouTuber, and it's actually pretty fucking awesome, so oh, I'd probably buy that just for the music. Um, so, th- I think the Nintendo Switch had like a Warriors 50... of Hyrule. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. The Nintendo Switch had like a $50 like sale on Christmas, and that was it. Yeah. But um, Nintendo consoles, they're popular for like five years, right? And then after that, they kind of... Nint- Nintendo just stopped selling the 3DS like last year, right? Yeah. Do you know that? Like, yeah. I'm willing to bet, like, fucking 90% of the sales after the five years are just jailbreaking. Probably. So, I reckon Nintendo has an incentive to make their consoles jailbreakable. Since Nintendo consoles are the best consoles to jailbreak. Since their the hardware's so quirky and usable that um, I, I fucking jailbreak my 3DS. I can do everything on it. Like, it has tracker software. It has, like, uh, tracking being music software. It has, uh, like, Korg fucking synthesizers. I can write homebrew for it. It is, like, the greatest console to, like, homebrew. Nice. And um, I don't get Nintendo being so anti-homebrew, since their sales would legitimately drop if they, like, completely removed homebrew. Yeah. Since a lot of people yeah. want to homebrew it. The Switch is a great console to homebrew. I mean, like, I see, you reminded me now of... That's not Nintendo themselves... His fault, yeah. But I remember, like, when I had one, I had the fucking R four chip. Oh yeah, you remember that shit? I still I bet, have one. Of I bet so many people listening to this like have had one as yeah. a kid. Like it, it was, it was just like a little cartridge, but you could put an SD card in your computer yeah. and just download games. Supposedly, that's what killed the DS in the end. Is R four sales? Wow, that's funny. Yeah. I mean, it's not, but <laughs> I mean, they're not broke by any means, so it is funny. Yeah, it's a good tool nowadays since you can just download rom since you're not going to find the fucking games anyway yeah. even i mean the game's like a buck on ebay but realistically like are you gonna fucking do that yeah exactly no just more e-waste but um 
Nintendo consoles are fucking great. I love them. Like, yeah. I love homebrewing them. Like, the Wii U is a fucking powerhouse now that I've jailbroken it. It runs GameCube, Wii, and Wii U games. Fuck, no. Nice. It does fucking everything, and it's so good. I, I like writing software for it as well, since it's so fun to do. Well, that sounds cool. Yeah. I think, um... That, well, fuck, that just reminded me. Have you seen the uh, the flat fucking Switch that they came out with? The, the like, Switch Lite? The Switch 2DS. The Switch Lite, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I'm just like, it's like, you remember the 2DS that they had? It was a flat oh, panel, yeah. and you couldn't <sighs> fold it, and it looked like an eyesore. This the, is the same thing. The original 2DS is a fucking, like, disaster Tragedy. Of like, design. what were they thinking with that thing? It looks what like a thinking? fucking Fisher Price. <laughs> well, that's tool. what it's meant to be. Yeah. It's meant to be for little kid injuries. And the Switch doesn't do the fucking Switch thing. The, sw- the Switch Lite doesn't do you know what, Switch. Do you know what the worst part about that is? So, Switches have Joy-Con drift. Mm. So, every, like... They say after, like, a couple of years, the Joy-Con will just drift up on yeah. the right side. It'll just go up. And you can't fix that. You Probably. have to, like, replace the joystick. So, the Switch Lite has that. And the joysticks are fixed. The Joy-Cons are fixed. Yeah. So if it starts drifting, you're fucked. You have to get the entire console replaced. Fucking hell, yeah. I don't know why they keep doing this. Like, surely it's... Like, I guess, like, they, people will cheap out and buy it every now and then. Yeah. But, like, if people really want to switch, they're not going to get that one. No. Nah. Like, it's for people who, like, semi... Like, like they get it for Christmas because their mom thinks they'd want one. You can't fucking dock it either. And they don't either. know anything. Exactly, you why can't dock it. Why the fuck can't you it dock is, it? Like, it's just a terrible handheld... It's like, it's a big fat long Nintendo DS that you can't fold. Why and that can't is, you dock it? Looks Why? like shit. Why? Because I think Why it has less you processing it? power. I it don't doesn't though. Know. It has the same fucking processor. Oh well, there you go. So you can you can play in like 738p because it's in some weird resolution. Yeah, it's 720, and, I think. And do nothing else with it. It's just and just fucking... ruin ruin the nicest part about it, which is like having your friends over and playing Mario Party and like super like on an OLED TV or something. If yeah. you've got one, it looks fucking fantastic. Mm. But instead, you can play with yourself <laughs> okay. and also use your 2DS Switch. I think that's a good place to end playing with yourself. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I always enjoy doing that. Anything? Uh, anything about the coronavirus? On uh, well. I have been working intensely over the weekend. I worked all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and even this morning I worked. And I don't know what the fuck happened on Friday, but everyone decided that tomorrow on Saturday, shit's getting fucking real. Would you believe I have toilet paper, Jordy? I, oh, I don't, dude. <laughs> I do. I'm going to rob you now. Paper. That's what I believe. I have yeah. hyperallergenic four-ply toilet paper. Fucking hell. That's that's the biggest... That's like a Rolex that's right a flex there. Fuck right there. That's yeah. a flex. And it's just, I've the entire store was full and we just got bombarded the whole time. It was fucked. So Loads I have one money. message. Yeah. If you're a customer out there, you can do... Fuck you. F- yes, <laughs> fuck you. But it, you can you can take as much stuff as you want, right? I don't fucking care. I, ultimately, I don't fucking care. Buy it or put just it back. Just buy, yeah, buy it, put it back, and be nice about it. Yeah. That's it. Because us, got, us like people who work in retail both tom and i do yeah. and you know lots of other people do too we're there and we are just working three times as hard trying to fill everything up mm. while you guys go fucking nuts preparing for something that might not even happen probably won't happen and like just be nice about it it's you gonna, don't you don't have to you don't have to tr- every single customer would come by and say oh i'm just stocking up because everyone else is stocking <laughs> yeah, up yeah that's just it's, in case it's like okay that's fine whatever like right say that loop. if you want I f- it's it's annoying as fuck but say that if you want just be nice about it because i got fucking yelled at so much over the weekend i was working at a store i don't even usually work at i was helping out on sunday mm-hmm. and i was just being reamed because i didn't order stuff for a store i don't even work at <laughs> and not to mention that they can't make the shit fast enough because everyone's going too crazy. That's that's the problem. The actual issue is that there's not enough trucks and they're not coming exactly. fast enough. Our, our trucks can fit like only... We're, we're limited to like 36 pallets to a store. And for us to actively fill the shelves at the moment, we need literally 100. Yeah. Like we just can't do it. We cannot do it. The, and the toilet paper they can't make quick enough. Hand sanitizer they can't make quick enough. It's a big problem. The ironic part is that because people are panic buying this shit, it creates an even bigger shortage. It's exactly. like a feedback loop. So it, it's exactly none of this would have happened if people just reasonably bought shit. Exactly. And people see that the shelves are empty and that once that makes them want to buy even more shit. And I know. Pack even more. So 
it's which inherently makes things more empty yeah. for the next person who buys even more it's a shit. cycle like yeah, you need to break the cycle like if I, I, the the thing that fucks with my head is the fact that it's still the people who are stocking up and all that shit it's still going down we're still not getting anything which means people are still like coming in and buying shit even though yeah. they, they must be coming back and buying even more shit even though they don't fucking need it like buy as much toilet paper as you want to write whatever do, do whatever the fuck you want don't at don't. the end Just of the buy day one fucking Just buy what you need from now on right yeah. chances are people listening to this You've probably stocked up, even if you don't want to tell yourself that you did, right? Yeah. You could just say, you, you can give yourself whatever excuse you want in your head, that you did it because, you know, oh, I just, just in case. Or... The, okay, the thing about this, because of this shortage, you have to, like, you have to have some. Like, yeah. you just have to. Yeah. Like, I am, I fucking hate this. Like, my family, we bought a, like, single packet, because we had to buy a single yeah, packet. Yeah, exactly. Because there are shortages. It is unknown whether I can get toilet paper, like, within the next couple of weeks. So I had to get, like, a 24-pack of toilet paper. And we have a limit of one per person for toilet paper at the moment. Yeah. And even still, I am certain, because we're so busy, I wouldn't even know if someone kept coming in and buying toilet paper. These people... Like, I honestly wouldn't. Like, I don't have a... Yeah. I haven't had a second in the past three days to stop and think. This is... This, um... You know the baby formula crisis that happened a while ago? Yeah. People would literally buy two jars because that's how much they have change their shirt and come back in oh there you go and they're doing this with toilet paper as well they fucking change their clothing and yeah come that back doesn't in. even surprise me it's like just just what we've started doing now as well is we like if we do get like enough we withhold some yeah for the end of the day so like some people who come during the morning can only get so much and then we put the other ones out so that people who finish work can go out and get some because they might not get a chance to all day and all that shit like the fact that we have to fucking do this is stupid enough as yeah. it is Anyway, I don't want to dedicate too much more time to this. <laughs> okay. Like, like it's it's just you know, just be respectful is my only thing because we're working so fucking hard, and just be like being nice makes it so much easier. Yeah. Because if you're gonna yell at us and all that, it just makes it so much worse. Okay, Anyways, bye.